Hi there. We're going to make a tumbler with an aged look book page and we're going to use coffee to do it. So I've got laser printed paper here. There is a high likelihood I have not tested it, but I would imagine just based on past experience with water slides, inkjet would likely bleed with this where laser, you don't have to seal a water slide, so it's not gonna bleed on here. So what we're going for is the old aged book page, that versus that. I've got an old book here to kind of use as an example for color. You can kind of see the difference there. So there's a couple of different ways to make it darker. You can do it multiple times, and I'll do a round of that in just a bit. And there's a couple of ways, or there's at least one way to make darker spots. Um, and I will show you that as I'm doing it, but I can't talk during that part because it's um, it's kind of hard. I'm gonna have to reduce the volume to use my heat gun. But this is what we're using here and a paper towel. So when I get ready to make dark spots where it's wet, I'm just gonna get my heat gun a lot closer so it kind of scorches that paper. If you do this in the oven, your edges will naturally typically have kind of that crispy edge and it'll kind of curl up a little bit on you anyways. So if you don't want that, you may want to use your heat gun instead. But if you'll YouTube it, there's a couple of different ways you can do um, five to 10 minutes at 200 degrees on these after you get the coffee on them. Uh, but this is how I'm going to do mine based on my workspace. So I've got my paper towel wet here, and I'm just going to saturate this, just like that. I've already done all the pages that are gonna be prominent, all the quotes that I'm gonna do, I to kind of emphasize them. These are just gonna have, I'm gonna cut out some of this for filler in the background. That way I don't accidentally have any base paint showing. So now I'm going to hit it with the heat gun and dry it up. Really quickly, I'll show you what I mean by kind of scorching it a little bit. that. Not so much that you catch your house on fire, but enough that you're scorching that paper up. And you can kind of see. I forget, I can't talk and do this at the same time. You can kind of see how it's fading. That's kind of my guide on what I'm doing here. I'm, but I'm not intending to do a lot of these, but if you needed to, that's how to do it. You got to do it while it's still pretty damp. I tried to do it while it was already completely dry and it did not work. So one way you can tell if you've got it all the way dry, see how we can see those letters right here pretty easily? Watch them fade. Just like that. Make sure you put your heat gun down on a surface that won't melt. Um, ask me how I know. You can kind of see how crinkly that ended up. That's perfect. If you need your pages to be aged and distressed but flatter, put something heavy on them overnight, which is what I'm going to do. I've got my stack of papers right here with all the quotes I want to use. Iconic, right there. I know it's not the one everybody's familiar with because the movie version's a little different, but these are just a little too wrinkly for what I want to put on my cut to make them lay down flatter. So when I'm done here, I'm gonna make sure they're all completely dry. I'll take my gloves off and feel them to make sure there's no dampness. And then I'll put something heavy on them 
to flatten them out, but it'll still have that kind of crinkly effect and um, kind of the splotchy aging. So to get it extra dark, you just go over it again. I'm just gonna do the bottom half just so you can see it here. There's a couple of different things you can use to stain them. Tea will get you a little bit lighter vibe, kind of like the uh, book that I have. Coffee a little darker. And there's another one I saw in one video. I can't remember, it was soy something. I'm assuming that it was soy sauce, but it probably wasn't. Um, and it was even darker. It was really nice. Um, it was one with maps. That was a good one. I'll try and remember to do the link in the video uh, description. But I'll show you this in just a second. probably a weirdo but this smells so good I love the smell of coffee but burning it or heating it like this it kind of smells like burnt marshmallows in here now so you can kind of see that it's a little bit darker shade not drastic if you really wanted to go darker you could really soak it on there there are some tutorials where they actually poured coffee and they literally submersed it and then set it off to the side to do it uh, to dry it this one's actually easier to see this side versus that side. Um, so there's that where you can submerse it and blow dry it or oven it or this way that works best for my particular workstation. So next, when I get to the point, I'm going to just kind of gently tear around the quote that I'm using. This is not what I'm using, but it gets the, the idea across. Oops, turn it. Okay. So, for that next part, I'm going to burn the edges. You could also just stain them a little bit more. Make sure not to breathe in any of the ash. It's not good for you. I've seen people accomplish this with ink. Like if you're a stamper, you probably know how to do this the other way. Just like that. So when we get our cup and Mod Podge, just gonna look like that over and over and over. The cup that we're gonna put these on is actually a skinny, so it'll be nice not to have a bunch of curves to work around. But that is what we are gonna work on for the rest of this cup. So I'm gonna get those pieces all done and then I'll um, be back to show you the Mod Podge and the ceiling have all my pieces that are the quotes that she wants visible. I just need to burn the edges. I'll do that later. But what I want to do first is um, I want to cover this cup completely. And then I will seal it really good and throw a layer, a thin layer of epoxy on it. And I'll tell you why. I want to make sure that as I'm laying these pieces, I don't end up with any cup showing underneath. And if I'm going to go ahead and have other pieces anyways, I want that to be my base. I don't want to be trying to figure it out as I go. But the reason that I'm going to go ahead and put 
a layer of epoxy on is because I want to make sure that when I Mod Podge this and it gets wet with Mod Podge, it doesn't show the letters beneath um, or bleed through or whatever. That's just my layer of protection. And that's probably overkill. That's okay. I can live with that. I'm not super concerned about the base coat as much as I am the top layer. So we'll be back in just a bit with uh, that already done. I have a layer of epoxy on here that I did during a live video that I did last night. I was just out here working. Um, before doing that though, I had two layers of Mod Podge brushed on, just regular Mod Podge. And on top of that, I had two layers of clear Rust-Oleum 2X. So I clearly didn't seal it as well as I thought I did because I've got a few spots right here that are wet looking, literally like four spots total. That's from not sealing it as good as I thought I did. But it's not the end of the world because I still have all of these quotes to put on there and gold leaf flakes. So just going to go ahead and throw on another layer just so it's a little smoother. It's not as smooth as I want it to be and need it to be uh, for that next layer. Uh, but that's the only part, the sealing part, that I did not record is that sealing and first layer of epoxy. My layer is pretty smooth now. So next step is now to do the ones that were actually wanting to be the main focus. So I'm going to burn my edges here, just like I showed you earlier. And then we're going to lay them down one by one. So just a quick recap, just kind of over it like that, just to kind of get rid of that white edge right there. But not a lot, lot. Unless that's the look you're going for. Just enough to kind of really, really age it up. Uh, again, like if you are prefer, if you, <laughs> I can't talk. If you prefer inks, great. If you prefer some other way of distressing, go for it. That's what's going to make it unique. So we'll kind of go here and there. I'm not super concerned about those darker spots like that, like I said, because I'll hide them with um, gold leaf later. But I am going to go ahead and, I mean, if it works out, fine. I'm not super worried about it. But this one, the main focus is like these two paragraphs here. So I'm going to put them kind of either up or down so I can build up around it. But then there'll be a few spots that are smaller, like that iconic line right there. This part's real easy. I usually pour this in a cup, but for this, I'm just going to show you right here. So you just do the back like this. This is how I'm doing it anyways. Just get all the way to the end, the edges, and just completely cover the whole back of it. Not super thick because then we'll get that wrinkly effect that we talked about a second ago, um, but cover it completely. And then when you lay it down, press it real smooth, try and get out any air bubbles. And it's enough that it does what we need it to do. We don't have to completely coat this super thick, just enough to do that. And then once we have it laid, of course, you go over the top again. I fit on as many of the quotes as I could without really overlapping too much and making it uh, hard to read the ones I did get on there. So I've got a nice thin layer of Mod Podge on there. If you go too thick, it does make weird wavy spots in your paper. I mean, that's what paper does when it gets wet. Luckily, Mod Podge isn't as big of a, a fender, I guess you could say, as water would be, but you can see every once in a while there's a little bit of spot that kind of kind of waved up a little bit. No big deal. So this is going to get lots of dry time and then I'm going to go over it again and again and again. I'm going to seal it several, several times so that I don't run the risk of ending up with more of those wet spots. I do not want any more. I can hide the ones that I do have, like I said just a second ago. But I don't know that I could do 
much if there was much more. So make sure all your little edges are down flat. That's what I'm doing here. And then um, let it dry and then do it again. And then again. Once I do my third layer of Mod Podge, I'll do a clear coat of spray paint. Just for good measure and a good seal before doing my first layer of epoxy. Okay guys, here's what it looks like right now. It's got a lot of Mod Podge, couple of clear coats on it. I totally forgot to trim the edge right here. Um, so I just went over it really slowly and carefully with my blade and I had to scrape off the white spray paint. Basically you want just a little bit there because of this being paper, it's just gonna be more at risk of if water gets under there, it's gonna be really, really obvious. So I just went through really carefully and trimmed that up and then I scraped off the paint and then I went over it really good with Mod Podge right there at that seam or at that opening that I made. And then after that dried, I went over this really good with Mod Podge again. So now I'm going to do my, uh, my layer of epoxy. And then once we figure out what the customer wants for her decals and placement and color, then we're done. I'm gonna do a little gold foil on there, but that's not really something that's really uh, mandatory for this particular video. So that's it. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comments. I'll try my best to answer them, but that's what we're looking at. The options are wide open. I've got a whole stack of old books that I've kind of accumulated from the thrift store and garage sales that I'm gonna be working on these with. And you can age them and all that good stuff. Yeah, so if you like my channels, please consider subscribing. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, thanks for watching. You have a good one.